And he is certain, the dying person is certain that this is the time of separation. This is the time to leave. And the leg is wound about the leg. Yani the legs are on top of each other. The scholars say this is a sign of weakness. This is a sign of weakness. To your Lord on that day is the procession. To Allah, you'll be returning. So he neither believed nor he prayed. It's very dangerous for those who are negligent about their salah. The so-called Muslims who pray part-time. One day they pray, the next day don't. One salah they fulfill, the other one they abandon. This ayah says, فَلَا صَدَّقَ وَلَا صَلَّى He neither believed nor he prayed. Had he really believed, he would have prayed. وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى Nay, but he denied and he turned away. ثُمَّ ذَهَبَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ يَتَمَطَّى Then he went to his family swaggering in pride. You know, pride, prideful, boasting. Then Allah said to that person, أَوْلَى لَكَ فَأَوْلَى Woe to you, then woe to you. Then again, ثُمَّ أَوْلَى لَكَ فَأَوْلَى Then again, woe to you, then woe to you. Does the son of Adam assume that he will be left neglected? Do you think you were created? أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you believe that you were created with no purpose and that to us you will not return? فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ So exalted is Allah, the truth, the sovereign. Meaning this could never be the case. Otherwise people will be attributing to Allah lack of wisdom. To create the creation without an objective of life is nonsensical. It could never be the case. So there is an objective of life. And these ayat describe the condition of the dying person. In Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Allah says, فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُرْقُومِ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُرْقُومِ إِلَّا بَلَغَ فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُرْقُومِ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذٍ تَنْظُرُونَ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبُصِرُونَ فَلَوْلَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فَأَمَّا إِنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ فَرَوْحٌ وَرَيْحَانٌ وَجَنَّةُ نَعِيمٍ وَأَمَّا إِنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينِ فَسَلَامٌ لَكَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينِ وَأَمَّا إِنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ الضَّالِّينَ فَنُزُلٌ مِنْ حَمِيمٍ وَتَصْلِيَةُ جَحِيمٍ إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ حَقُّ الْيَقِينِ فَسَبِّحْ بِاسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ The ayat are a little different. Allah says, So then why when the soul has reached the throat? وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذِنْ تَنْظُرُونَ And you at that time are looking on. You're looking on to the dying person at the moment of death. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبَصِرُونَ And our angels are nearer to him than you, but you do not see. And we will see, we'll deal with the narrations, how that happens. Then Allah says, then why not, if you are not going to be recompensed, if there's no accountability, تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Bring it back, if you are truthful. Get the biggest president of any country. Let him have all of the security guards outside. Machineries, weaponries, Tanks, bombs, everybody's outside his door. No one can enter upon him, right? Full protection. This person cannot be possibly killed by anyone because of all of the barriers that he has placed between him and the common people. But can anyone stop the angel of death? If this person was to die, can anyone with authority, his minister or otherwise, bring the soul back to the man? No. And Allah was reminding us of this fact. We are the children of Adam. We have no power. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There's no way to get anything done, and there's no power except by Allah's will. You cannot. I cannot even move my arm unless Allah wills. I don't have independent power. The power that I and you have is dependent on Allah's Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah gives us the power to function, talk, walk, and so on and so forth. So you will return it. You bring it back. Bring the soul back if you are truthful. Now here's the bottom line. If the dying person was among the muqarrabin, those brought near to Allah, فَرَوْحٌ وَرَيْحَانٌ وَجَنَّةُ نَعِيمٌ 
then rest and pleasure, then rest and pleasure and uh, garden of delight. And if he is among the people of the right, then the angels will say to him, Peace for you, you are among the companions of the right. The companions of the right, those who will get their book in their right hand, the people of paradise. And the last option that shows you that the, levels are diff the believers are at different levels. Al Muqarrabin are better than Ashab al Yameen. Those who are nearer to Allah are a degree or many degrees above those who are simply from the inhabitants or the companions of the right, the inhabitants of Jannah. But the final option, and if he were among those who denied, the deniers who were astray, then his accommodation will be scalding water. So hot that we cannot even, beyond boiling point. And, and he will be receiving his share of burning in the fire. This is the true certainty. That's what Allah says. Then indeed exalt the name of your Lord, the most great. Sabih, glorify, which means to, to free Allah from any deficiencies and imperfections. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are some ayat, brothers and sisters in Islam which describe the moment that is awaiting each and every one of us here. This shall happen to you, to me and to you and to everyone upon earth. So we don't want this moment to come while we are heedless of Allah. We don't want this moment to come while we are playing around. We were not created to play around. You can play sports, but don't make sports the objective of life. You can work and earn money, but don't make working and earning money the objective of life. You can get married and have children, but don't make marriage and having children the objective of life. And I can go on and you can give me more examples. This is not why we were created. These are secondary. And the problem with the Muslims and the non-Muslims, and the non-Muslims suffer in a larger degree, that they have favored the dunya, the life of this world over the year after. That's why they don't have preparation. But this disease afflicts the Muslims as well. Not as bad, but pretty bad. So much so that you look around the condition of the Muslims and you get traumatized. Try to go buy a souk on one of the odd nights of Ramadan. And you will think this is a joke. Three in the morning. Three in the morning, a, a, a mall, a shopping mall, is packed and people can't even breathe in there. You just woman, all you see is black, black, you know, going back and forth. Niqab and everything, alhamdulillah, or covering their, uh, exposing their face while not wearing makeup and everything, alhamdulillah, also acceptable for those who follow that opinion. But what is going on in this, this virtuous time? of Ramadan, this one, once a year opportunity to, to be saved from the Jahannam and everything, and this shopping fever, you know, overtakes the Muslims. You think that these people, if, if we go back to the Sahaba, you cannot even imagine, you cannot even imagine this happening. Umar radiallahu anhu probably closed the soup down. He will come and he will close the shopping mall down, so everybody go home. If you don't want to worship Allah, at least don't be in a place which Allah hates. Now I'm not saying don't get your Eid clothes. I know this is a must. But had we been wise enough, we would have gotten the Eid clothes before Ramadan. Really. You would have had yourself ready. So one or at least before the last 10 nights. Right? So when this time comes, يعني, 